Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and today I want to talk to you about yet another insanely over-engineered piece of my my gear, my the what I, the tools that I use to create these videos, to do voiceover, to teach, to do acting, auditions, and all that sort of thing. And it's one of those things that you never think about until it's too late. Um, they say there are two types of people in the world. There are people, there's one set of people that have cried very, very big tears over being the victim of a power sag or a power surge or, you know, plugging their, their gear into something that was unprotected and got fried or a hard drive that crashed or any of these, you know, crazy things. And the other uh, group of people in the world are people who are going to eventually cry over that because it's only a matter of time before disaster strikes. So before I tell you what I did and why I did it and how it's happened, uh, I want to go back to 1995, August of 1995, I believe, maybe 96, but I think it's 95. I was working in America Online. I headed up a team that was creating new areas on uh, AOL at the time. And we were exhibiting at the old Macworld conference in Boston. And it's the middle of August, sweltering day. We're on the floor in this convention center. You know, people are walking up to us. We're giving them discs because that's what we did. Go install AOL. And all of a sudden, we can't use our computers to demonstrate AOL because AOL isn't responding to us. My initial thought was, oh, somebody got into the the network in the thing in there, you know, because in those days people were making fun of AOL. AOL. Uh, that's when AOLsucks.com was really popular. Um, but it turns out that there was no problem with the connectivity in the hall. AOL had suffered a massive outage. I mean, it was, everything went down. It was like the other day with Facebook. Yeah, everything went down. And it was a front page story on USA Today the next day and on the New York Times and the Washington Post and Chicago Tribune. And it illustrated just how tenuous the servers and the infrastructure had grown and been built. It was kind of like a little bit of a house of cards at AOL. They were based in Vienna, Virginia. They hadn't made the move out to their new headquarters yet. And they had all their servers in one or two buildings. And there was a power outage in the area. They didn't have any backup. And it led them, this whole thing, and it it led them to, to put their servers in various locations, kind of the precursor to the cloud, where you've got servers in, in Virginia, servers in California, servers in England and Mexico, and they're all over the place. And if one goes down then another set of servers can pick up the slack because the information is mirrored in all of the different places that they have servers. That's what they did after this happened. But another really big thing happened. It proved to the world that online services, and America Online in particular, were no longer just the bastion of tech dudes and dudettes. You know, when I was on CompuServe, in the 70s and 80s, or on Genie or Prodigy, or I was working with our mainframe computer, the Univac 1108 and the Wang computer and the PDP that we had in our high school in the 70s, that was definitely geek territory only, right? The average person didn't even know we had a computer in the high school, let alone how to use it. Um, and, you know, obviously that's changed today. Everybody's got personal computers and, you know, it's, it's pretty commonplace. But it showed the world that America Online was right up there with television and radio and the electrical system. It was a utility, not a novelty. And it had to be protected. It had to have backup units and it had to have distributed data and distributed access. And it was right after that that broadband became really popular. So that made it even more important. Okay, so that was a really illustrative tale for me. I'm like, you know, ah, that's crazy. Now, how are they going to fix this? How are they going to protect themselves? And the lessons that I learned working for the company at the time this was going on, we all were made aware of what they were going to do to fix all this, um, really helped 
pay it forward for me when I set up my situation, much, you know, my studio, um, how I was going to protect myself. Now, in 2001, 2, and 3, um, I was doing the morning show on the East Coast and the nighttime talk show on CNET radio. And I was doing it from my second bedroom, first in uh, Washington, D.C., and the second bedroom was gloriously outfitted as a, as a broadcast facility, and it was awesome. Um, and then later when I moved out here to Los Angeles, uh, here in, in Hollywood, um, I outfitted the same thing. Now, when I got out here, CNET built me this beautiful studio, uh, and they put in racks and racks of equipment. I would connect up with a satellite uplink every night. And one of the things that I wanted to make sure we put in was something that is still here today. I don't have any of the satellite gear. I'm not on the radio anymore. Like my, I have a rack unit that's a two column rack unit and it's mostly shelves. You know, you can put rack shelves in. You've seen them. If you've seen scenes in, uh, you know, th uh, uh, techno thrillers where they show, you know, just rows and rows of servers, you know, with all those blinking lights. Every one of those is a standard 19 inch wide rack uh, system. And the different things that they put in there are a certain number of units high. One unit high, two units high, three units high, etc. Servers are usually two or three units high. Uh, if they're just a little side note, if they're thinner, they're called blade servers because they're so they're like blades cutting in. Anyway, I digress. I have still to this day a massive UPS uninterruptible power supply that the power for my condo goes into, and then the power supply is what this particular room, all of the outlets are plugged into. So that does two things. Number one, if the power goes out, this massive power supply keeps me up and running with all the lights and the, the, the computers and the audio and, and everything for two days. For two days. It's got that much. Now, you've probably seen smaller UPSs. They kind of look like little blocks. And it's a single battery. And it'll keep you running if the power goes out for a couple of hours, you know, if you're just plugging your computer into it. Um, but this is an industrial strength thing, and it lets me go for a while. Um, the other thing that it does, as would one of those smaller units that you'd go and buy at Best Buy, is it conditions the power. And I want you to consider doing this because it, the power that comes into your house or your office, unless it's conditioned, it's kind of jaggedy. You know, there's peaks and there's sags, and that's actually important to the equipment that you're using. A peak can overpower your equipment. A sag can do damage even worse because it's not enough power. I mean, it's more complicated than all that, but know that it's dangerous to plug your stuff right into the wall, right? A, a, a lightning strike could kill you, and lightning strikes happen everywhere, right? So uh, what happens when you run your power through a power, a UPS, an uninterruptible power supply, is that the power that's coming out of that that you actually plug your, your stuff into is very even. It's very conditioned. There are no big spikes and there's no sags because it's actually coming off the batteries in a very, very easy and constant approach. So that's kind of a side benefit to it. So this power supply is a 1500 watt uh, two rack unit uh, structure with eight big batteries that have to be replaced every couple of years because you know, they're constantly being charged and they're constantly being depleted by my equipment. Um, so eventually they they lose the capacity to hold a charge and they have to be replaced. And it's like, I think it's like $300 every time I have to replace all eight of these batteries. And they look like little uh, car batteries, little uh, motorcycle batteries. And they all fit in a row. In the, the rack is very heavy, as Max Smart will uh, attend attest because he takes care of that for me. Um, and... You know, to have that as a protection against some of the crappiest weather that we've had here in Southern California, and you've probably had as well. If you live in the Midwest, there's been these crazy winter storms, uh, you know, hurricanes in the South. I mean, there is no place on earth that is spared of bad weather. So if you want to protect yourself, you know, I talked before about protecting yourself by backing up your hard drives and my insanely over-engineered rotating hard drive system for backups. 
if you really want to protect yourself, at the very least, get a $50 to $100 uh, UPS. You know, APC is one of the big companies that has them. Belkin has them. Mine is an APC. Uh, that's I think that's uh, something Power Corporation. I don't know what it actually stands for, but they're they're a very respected brand. At least get one of those at Best Buy and plug your most critical gear into that and plug that into the wall. And then you're going easier on your equipment and there's a potential that if the power goes out, you can keep going. Um, so that's really... All I, I, there's nothing other than that. Just like, I'm, I, I want you to be safe. I want you to be confident that you can do your work. And if something happens, you got, you got a recourse. Um, maybe you have something that you'd like to suggest, something that you've done that really makes things um, uh, uh, safe for you. You've got things backed up or you've got things with uh, a power structure that you can rely on, or you've got a spare camera or a spare microphone. Uh, what is it that you do to keep yourself safe? Or are you basically going, wow, I didn't know any of this stuff. I'm not, I'm not protected at all. I'm going to go get this. So let me know in the comments below, because I'd love to know in general what people that view this video, what their situation is. So let me know, right? Uh, if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and click on my head there. Uh, if there's no head there, then there's a subscribe button somewhere on the page. And if you'd like to see the last video I've just put up, Go ahead and click that frame and YouTube will play it for you. They'll know what to do. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. Please be safe. Thank you for watching these videos and I will talk to you tomorrow.